Uh, folks, so I'm not going to have anything on screen here um, for this segment, but I want to have like a little bit of a conversation about uh, some of the social media stuff going on in regards to the invasion of Ukraine by Russian forces at the behest of Vladimir Putin and his like, you know, he, he like died in like Civilization 7 or whatever the new one is. Uh, he died in that game, and then he's like, well, fuck, now I'm going to do it in real life. Um, but anyway, so there's an invasion going on, and one thing I want to talk about here, and I, I could have, like, a PowerPoint presentation up during this, but I'm just shooting from the hip. Uh, so, if you're not familiar with some of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about, um, you know, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be getting into more specific Ukraine news after this, but I want to talk about this. Because this is something that's been very much so heating up um, online uh, over the last couple of uh, days. Specifically, really, the last 12 to 24 hours. There's been a lot of stuff going on. Um, and I want to talk about the fact that we are currently in a propaganda war. Um, now, we've been in a propaganda war. Prop I mean, you can make the argument, we're always in a propaganda war. Like, there's, we're all, there are, there's always people trying to propagandize all the time. And that's true. That's correct. Um, but specifically, I want to talk about Russia uh, and their involvement in the propaganda war. And I want to go back into uh, the 2016 election here a little bit. Now, please bear with me. Um, so uh, 2016, a lot of people claimed that Russia interfered with the election. That turned out to be true. Um, now, again, did they switch voting machines? No, I don't think so. But what they did is they had troll farms to sow discord um, in American social media. And that's something that Russia, uh, like R Russian government officials, and obviously people from all over the world as well, have been doing for a long time, especially since 2016. But that, that, gained, that idea gained prominence in 2016. Now, I've been on the internet for a while. Um, I remember when Twitter didn't even exist, right? So it's like watching Twitter go from infancy to where it is now. Um, it, you know, it, it's very obvious that there are bots all over the place online. Uh, not only are there bots, but there are also bad actors. People that will purposefully say things that make you mad um, and to distract you from more important things. And so when I say this and why I'm saying this is because um, I think that we are in a propaganda war that has reached a boiling point, uh, given the fact that Russia has invaded Ukraine with a full-scale invasion. They are bombing apartment complexes. They are, uh, you know, they are they are massacring civilians, um, and you know it's a huge deal. Uh, and again, Ukraine is a country. Ukraine and all countries have problems, right? A lot of people are pointing, especially one of the biggest problems uh, that people want to point to is the Azov Battalion uh, in the Ukraine uh, National Guard. Uh, I believe yesterday the Ukraine National Guard posted a video of Azov Battalion uh, soldiers. Uh, greasing their bullets with pork fat to shoot Muslim Russian soldiers. Um, and this post came from the Ukraine National Guard Twitter account. Now, again, I couldn't make this a PowerPoint presentation and have all the things on the screen, but I'm just shooting from the hip here. Please bear with me. Um, so, now, obviously, that's horrible. Ukraine should not be... They should be doing their best right now to pretend that the Azov Battalion does not exist. Um, because, again, one of the things that Putin has said when invading Ukraine was that he wants to de-Nazify Ukraine. Now, we know from other statistics and studies uh, that Russia has a much, much higher anti-Semitism problem than Ukraine overall throughout the population and throughout the military. We can make very clear parallels uh, between Putin and Hitler uh, right now as well. So, but again, Hitler, uh, rather, I mean, Putin, my apologies, said, right, he said that he wanted to denazify Ukraine. Right now, again, now, the Azov Battalion is horrible. The Azov Battalion has done terrible things, uh, especially since the ongoing conflicts, uh, you know, and especially since 2014. Um, 
The Azov Battalion is horrible. They have a history of training right-wing paramilitary wannabes uh, from all over the world uh, in the conflicts going on at the eastern parts of Ukraine. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of American fascists have gone to Ukraine and have been taught weapons training and combat training by the Azov Battalion. They are a horrible organization and they need to be condemned. Uh, but again, every, I need to be very clear, every single military in the world has neo-Nazis in it. Every single one. And Russia ha is no exception. Russia also has a significant neo-Nazi problem in their military and just in their population. Now, again, we do in the United States as well. Uh, we do all across the world. So my thing is, okay, I disagree with the Taliban. I think the Taliban is horrible. I think the Taliban is a horrible um, organization. That said, the Taliban did try to retake their own government once the American occupiers left. And that's something that, you know, I can't necessarily find it in myself to criticize them all the way. Now, it's horrible that the Taliban is going to be doing a repressive regime of the people in Afghanistan, especially that don't want to live under uh, that kind of law and they should be allowed to leave. And, you know, and, and there's a huge problem. But again, we're talking about imperialist aggressors and invaders uh, being fended off by the people that are from that location. Yes, Ukraine has problems. Yes, Ukraine has racists. Yes, Ukraine has neo-Nazis. And yes, they are, have been integrated into the military. That is a problem, but that does not change the fact that Ukraine is defending itself from an imperial aggressor. And that's, in my opinion, the problem here. Um, there's been a lot. We are, again, in the middle of a propaganda war. Uh, not everyone, obviously, in this chat room listening to this and online is in Ukraine, is in Eastern Europe or Russia um, or, you know, anywhere in that region. A lot of people reading the news here are from all across the world. And again, Russia is not just a military superpower. Uh, they are a superpower when it comes to disinformation. Again, um, Putin is a former KGB agent. He is very... Uh, informed in the art of deception, uh, and a propaganda war is something we need to pay attention to. So, yes, there are problems in Ukraine. None of them are relevant at this moment. And in and, and my opinion, yes, we can talk about the problems in Ukraine. There have been reports that at the border of Ukraine and Poland, um, Poland is offering uh, Ukrainian civilians the ability to enter the country without identification um, because of refugee, uh, you know, the refugees, essentially. And there have been reports of Poland uh, denying entry from black Ukrainians, and that is a problem. Racism is a problem, but that does not change the fact that currently Ukraine is under significant bombardment by an imperial superpower, right? And so I want to be talking about this because... Um, it recently came out that the uh, Snake Island uh, Battalion or whatever, like the group that was on Snake Island that told the Russian warship to go fuck itself, uh, they actually did not end up being killed by the warship. The warship actually did end up capturing them and they became prisoners of war. Now, it's great that they're not dead. Um, that's wonderful. But a lot of people are using this opportunity to talk about how the fact... Um, that, oh, things change. Like, oh, there's details that we don't have all the info on um, that are coming out and that change things, right? Now, again, we are in a war scenario here, um, especially uh, when wars happen. There's a lot of very, 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 uh, you know, problematic things that come out. There's very little details, um, and that's on purpose. And again, if you think that the Russian, uh, you know, government is not going to take advantage of the fog of war and the moment where the news is breaking new items every 15 seconds, you are fooling yourself. And that's why I need you, uh, I need everyone really to really think about what the things here are more important. Um, you know, like, yes, it is like we can be mad at multiple things. I hate the fact that uh, Afghanistan is currently, you know, being controlled by a far-right repressive regime. That said, 
Obviously, the United States was an imperial aggressor, and I condemned the United States more than I would condemn the Taliban in that instance. Um, in the same way that I hate the fact that Ukraine's National Guard has, uh, you know, brought about uh, neo-Nazis into their ranks. I hate that. But also, you know what I hate more? Imperial superpowers. Um, and so I want to just, like, be very clear. Uh, covering the Ukraine, um, you know, invasion... Uh, I, you know, I want to be just very honest with you. I'm not going to be focusing on the bad parts of Ukraine at this moment in time. I'm just not. Like, I know there's a lot of YouTubers that are making it their, that, that's their angle, is they're going to focus on all the problems of Ukraine. Okay. All right. That's great. Um, and people need to know what's going on with Ukraine. And, you know, that, that information should be there. But also, I think, uh, you know, people really need to realize what the motives behind that is. Um, like, right now, like, again, if we're talking about Ukraine from 2014 or just even earlier up until now, that's a different story than when Russia is literally trying to bomb the capital city. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, like, I, in my opinion, um, you know, it. Th th there's a lot of problems, right? But at the end of the day, uh, Ukrainian civilians defending themselves against an imperial aggressor, uh, in my opinion, I'm on their side. Uh, now, you can say that I'm picking a side, I'm going on a team, that's fine. I will always pick civilians, uh, you know, defending themselves against aggressors, whether that be uh, people defending themselves against police uh, in the United States. Um, I was entirely 100% in support Um of uh, people defending themselves by any means necessary in 2020. Um, I will, and I consider myself, I want to be a positive propagandist for uh, causes that I agree with. Now, again, does that, does that mean I, I'm going to ignore every negative thing? No. And I think that we need to talk about negative things, but I also need, uh, think we need to talk about them uh, in context of the broader movement. I don't care if an anti-fascist, like, you know, shoved a core, uh, like a car door into someone on accident. I don't care about that. I'm not going to pretend that that, like, you know, destroys all of the anti-fascist movements um, in the world, like someone like Ben Burgess, maybe. Um, you know, is there are there problems in anti-fascist movements? Absolutely, there are problems. But when there is a situation like with the murder of George Floyd and there's giant protests and an uprising all across the country and even the world, I'm not going to be focusing on the problems with anti-fascist activists at that time. Um, in the same way that I don't personally want to focus on the problems of Ukraine more often than, you know, more like, you know, than the fact that there's an imperial aggressor trying to murder civilians. Um, and so I wanted to talk about this a little bit because, yes, Ukraine has a lot of problems um, and they shouldn't be ignored. Um, but also, in my opinion, Russia trying to invade another sovereign country is a bigger problem uh, than the fact that there are Ukrainists. There are neo-Nazis in every military. During the 2020, uh, 2020 uprising in the United States of America, National Guardsmen of the United States uh, that took all of their patches off and identification off illegally uh, were patrolling the streets of Washington, D.C. with live guns, and they were later identified. Several of them were open and proud neo-Nazis. They were not only in the National Guard, but they were literally posting on their phones as they were patrolling the streets of Washington, D.C. with guns aimed at black protesters. They were posting about how, oh, they're going to kill the blacks and stuff, right? So again, that is a huge problem. That is a huge problem, right? There are neo-Nazis in every military ever, right? And so, there are, again, there are neo-Nazis in the Russian military, in the Russian government, etc. Um, and right now, again, the fact that especially Putin's stated goal is that he wants to denazify Ukraine, that makes me even less likely to talk about the Azov Battalion. While they are a problem, the fact that Putin is trying to make it seem like they are a giant way more, like they control everything all the time. I don't want to play into that narrative. So I want to be uh, very clear with my position on this kind of stuff. Um, now, yes, I, you know, it's important to note these kinds of things. And I want to note these kinds of things. Um, and, and the the context that I figure is appropriate. Um, 
but you know a lot of people are are taking this moment to now now they're taking the moment to talk about all the problems with ukraine that's again ukraine has problems every country has problems the world has problems but in my opinion i would rather focus on the damage to civilians that this war is causing uh later in the program i'm going to be talking about how the russian stock market and the ruble has been ultimately it, it, it's been basically shredded into nothing um and that's all that's going to have the effect of hurting civilians a very very like is putin going to be personally like is he no longer going to be able to eat you know his daily recommended amount of calories a day is he not going to be able to like sit on his gold toilet um you know putin's going to be fine let's be honest right he is rich enough he's going to be fine his standard of living is not going to change the oligarchs in russia their standards of living are not going to change let's be real now are they going to be, like become the richest people in the world ever like they wanted to be in the in previously probably not now but the thing here uh, is the sanctions are going to be hurting a lot of russian civilians and that is a problem um as well that we need to talk about and i i'm more concerned with people uh that are being abused by an authoritarian government than i am uh you know minor issues with those people uh you know like it's i'm just being honest with you um so i just wanted to talk about that there we are in a propaganda where uh war at this moment uh people i think really they should try to educate themselves on everything and as much as they can that's good and i want people to be educated on everything but also please be very cautious about what your sources are uh, and what kind of info you're receiving. Now, I wanted to be very clear with my biases. I am in favor of Ukraine defending its sovereignty um, in this instance. that That's my position. Um, and so I want to put everything within that lens of analysis. I, I mean, you can make the argument that, oh, just let Russia take over Ukraine, less people would die. Maybe. Okay, maybe. But can we confirm that? I don't know. Um, also, I'm an anti-imperialist. I don't like imperialism. I don't like the idea that another country can just waltz in with tanks, murder your family, and say, you are now my citizen. I don't, I don't agree with that. Um, so in the same way that I, I protest against police in this country, which I view police as an occupying force in this country, I think the United States of America is currently being occupied by nazis uh and i refer to nazis as police i believe they're interchangeable um so i will always fight against imperialism aggression and oppression um and yes there are problems with ukraine and they need to be discussed but i don't think focusing on all the problems with ukraine right now is the best thing to do uh given the fact that you know there's just so much going on so i just wanted to be very clear with my biases um yes i'm aware of the problems in ukraine their government uh, their military. Um, I am in very, very aware of these problems and they are very, very important. Um, and, you know, I think that we should be sending resources to the civilians uh, that need to escape. I think uh, given the, the scandals going on with, uh, you know, black people in Ukraine, uh, they need a lot of support because they aren't getting as much institutional support from the government of Ukraine or Poland or other things. And they need even more help uh, getting to safety as well. Um, and so that stuff is very important and we can we can realize how important that stuff is while also realizing that Ukraine has a right to defend itself. Uh, and that is the most important aspect of what's going on, in my opinion, at this moment. Um, and so, again, I am in I am in very, very much so at this moment. I am in support of Ukraine. You know, I'm, you need to understand the lot of the Ukrainian criticism is probably disinformation campaigns being waged by Russia. Um, that doesn't mean that they're all completely untrue. The most, uh, you know, pervasive propaganda is stuff that has the kernel of truth. Like, yes, the Azov Battalion exists. So when Putin says he wants to denazify Ukraine, he's saying that because, oh, the Azov Battalion, which is like 1% of the National Guard exists, so therefore let's pretend it's 100% and we'll only talk about the Azov Battalion. Um, you know, like, that's their strategy. Like, does that mean, does that mean the Azov Battalion doesn't exist? No, it does exist. Does that mean they're good? No, they're bad. But that they're also not indicative of the Ukrainian uh, people as a whole. And we need to understand that Russia, 
uh, and pro-Russian and pro-imperialist forces are going to be trying to wage a propaganda war against us, and that's my opinion. So I just want to be very clear. A lot of people have told me a lot of things about my coverage of Ukraine, and I just want to be more clear with my position on this. Um, so, you know, again, solidarity and support with the Ukrainian people defending themselves. I believe everyone has a right to defend themselves against imperial aggressor, uh, aggressors. I believe self-defense is a very important thing. Um, I'm cold, so I'm putting like, I'm putting my hoodie on my knees and I'm realizing that that's like, you know, I gotta like be careful here because I'm on camera. Um, but um, yeah, so.